welcome to my channel. I am Andrea and this is Beyond the Pink Door. So I'm back today with my weekly catch-up vlog and there's been great excitement in the house this week because, well there's excitement every week with deliveries of fabrics and everything, but this week it was extra special delivery of my new camera. <laughs> so I'm a real camera fanatic. I love a camera. And without my Kofi supporters, I certainly wouldn't have this camera. So this is the Canon EOS M50. I did loads of research on what kind of camera. First of all, I was going to buy a Sanyo... Sony! Where am I getting? Sony camera. But um, I sat down one evening and I wrote a list of what I wanted and what I needed. And... This camera actually has a viewfinder, which is really what I wanted because I've really bad eyesight and I find um, because I love using a camera, say if I'm out and about, rather than my phone, which is really handy, I actually can't see the screen of the new cameras where you don't have a viewfinder. So I really wanted a viewfinder. So I have to say a huge shout out and a huge thank you to everybody who bought me a coffee on the Kofi account. Uh, I just actually can't believe that I have it. <laughs> so I had it... Um, now, I won't say ordered, but I was going to put a deposit on one in a shop in Galway, which is the local city to me, but we went into lockdown, so that didn't happen. So I thought, okay, what will I do? I was going to, I like buying from a shop because basically if you have any trouble, then you can go back and ask them questions. But I ordered it online. <laughs> I, I feel I took a bit of a chance. I bought it on eBay. And I got it at a reduced price because it came from a shop where it had been used as a demo model. So I saved quite a bit of money on it, which was a real bonus. And it arrived in the box. I can't show you the camera because I'm actually using it today. And I'm not sure if I'm using it properly. So I have the camera set up here and I have my phone set up here as well, just in case. Because <laughs> I don't want to waffle and not have it recorded. So great excitement and thanks everybody for helping me buy this camera it's just just amazing so i've been playing with it during the week and getting used to the settings and everything and it's amazing for taking product photographs and fabric photos and it just captures the colors so so well and yeah loads to learn so i'm really excited about that and we got loads of new fabrics in during the week as well and I will go through them on a live again um, on Sunday. I'm recording this on Saturday, so all going well, I'll have this up online on Saturday. But if I don't, it'll be up on Sunday and we'll also do another live on Sunday evening at seven. And thank you to everybody who tunes in for our live streaming. <laughs> um, I can't actually believe we're going into week five of it. Um, I just thought we would do one, nobody would turn up, and we just kind of go, oh, well, that didn't work. But no, we're getting great feedback. We're really enjoying it. Um, I think I'm, I'm getting a bit more into answering the questions. And I am sorry if you tune in and I don't answer your questions, just that I miss it. And I'm not quick enough to ask Keris as well. She doesn't like to butt in when I'm chatting. And when I get started, it's very hard to butt in when I get started talking. So yeah, it's been really great. And I think it really helps as well to be able to see a fabric rather than just a square on the website. And I get a great kick out of putting fabrics together and kind of coming up with like little capsule wardrobes. So I got a load of fabric in this week. And I feel now I have... I feel I have lots on the website now so that if you wanted to buy a little outfit that you could actually put some patterns and planes and cardigans and coats and it feels, when I look at all my fabrics, they feel like they all work together, if you know what I mean. So it's kind of the way my wardrobe has turned out recently that I can just pick things out and they all work. So I'm really pleased with that. And I've had a few new fabrics that I've had my eye on and I've had a, f I have a few plans. So I'm just going to show you, it's here behind me, I'm going to show you the Arum dress which I made last week. And I know I showed it on the live but I just thought I would show it to you here today. So it's the Deer and Doe Arum dress. So this is it. And it is the most amazingly simple dress. Um, I whipped this up very quickly last Sunday um, 
because I want to try out the pattern. And it's basically got a grown on sleeve and the only shaping in the dress is at the back along these princess lines. Now I cut it out with a seam down the back basically because I was able to save a lot of fabric that way. So I was able to put the front on the fold and then the back kind of slotted into it um, so that the back the centre back of it was actually upside down but it didn't matter on the pattern because even though the pattern looks like it's got a direction it's got flowers going in all different directions so I hope that makes sense. So by putting the back on the selvage so that I put a seam down the middle I think saved me a good maybe three quarters of a metre maybe and it's got a grown on sleeve so no sleeves to have to put in it's got a lovely facing, and so it's a nice deep facing. And other than that, it's just the simplest dress, very comfortable to wear. Um, if you watched my live last week, I said that you could easily make it out of a jersey. It's for a woven fabric, but you could definitely make it out of jersey if you wanted it a little bit more fitted. Um, it's fitted enough so that you can get it on over your head and it's nicely fitted without being too smocky, if that makes sense. And I kind of think that if you wanted to make it a little bit more fitted, you could put some little ties in on the side seams so that you could pull it in like a belt on the back. And I think that would work too. So I really liked this. I didn't make any changes uh, to the pattern. I made size 38. As I say, no changes, not even in the length. So it's just a nice length on me. So I'm sure it will be a little bit shorter, obviously, on somebody taller than me. And I'm only five foot. And I thought the sleeves were a lovely length as well. And I could get a cardigan on over the sleeves, no problem without them getting bunched up under, under the armpit. So it's a really, really well drafted pattern. Um, I wouldn't think with all the pattern on the back you can see the seams, but you can see maybe a centre seam down the back. So really, really pleased with that. Great pattern. I'll definitely be making more again. It might be one of my next mass produced patterns. <laughs> so. The other pattern I'm sure you're all aware of this week was the big launch of the lovely new Tilly and the Buttons Billy jumper and dress. So I'm going to make one of these for Keris because she loves a snuggly, snuggly dress. And we had already chosen a fabric, but then I got an email yesterday to say that more sweatshirting is coming in next week. And it's actually coming in about three weeks earlier than I was expecting, which is amazing. So we're going to hold on. So yeah, the Billy sweatshirt dress is what I'm going to make for her and it's got the lovely pockets at the sides. I got a lot of the Tilly and the Buttons patterns in during the week. Again, a very exciting delivery with our DPD driver who basically arrives now at nine o'clock in the evening. God love him, with still a full van. I don't know how these couriers are doing it. They're just, they're keeping the country running, aren't they? Like really and truly. So yeah, he arrived with this quite heavy box of almost 50 patterns, so we're very excited taking them all out. We love the packaging, of course, and the instructions, of course, are just amazing. No matter what level of sewer you are, they're brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to making this, and I really like the sweatshirt type jumper with the flouncy sleeves for myself. So I'm thinking of making this one here in a new fabric I got in during the week, and it's this snuggly, I think I called it winter jersey. So this is the grey version. I got black, navy, grey and rust. And it is, I wish you could actually feel it on the screen. It's so snuggly. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's got a lovely stretch to it and it feels quite thick. It just feels like it has to be a snuggly jumper. And I think it would be gorgeous with the gathered sleeves and into the cuff and I know that it said on I read it that you know if you're using a thicker sweatshirting it might be difficult to get the gathers into the cuff on some of them but I will report back and let you know but I don't think this will be too difficult on a domestic sewing machine getting it into the cuff in, in all the gathers so that's a plan I've this cut off now to go into the washing and then the other plan that I have as well, <laughs> the plans are building, is I want to have another go at the heather dress after making such a mess 
of that pattern. So I got this lovely fabric. So this is the, I think it's called the Dots jersey and it's in a lovely royal blue colour and I really love, love royal blue. Um, I also got it in an old rose colour. I only got the two colours because again I'm buying mine off a website and I don't know what they're going to be like so I didn't know how big these dots were going to be or what nice quality it would be and it's gorgeous. I love it so I'm going to order this in some more colours as well. And I think this will be really lovely in the heather dress. So I have sent my pattern for printing and I've also sent the pattern for the lovely new 1960s coat from So Over It for printing as well because I'm going to make that for Keras in red because she would really love that. And I love making coats and the last few coats I've made I haven't lined them and that's simply because I really liked the snuggliness of the fabric and I wanted it close to my skin. But on wearing them, I realise why really you put lining in and it's, you know, to preserve the coat, I suppose, number one. It looks lovely when you look inside the coat and also it's easier to get the coat on and off because my lovely snuggly coats kind of stick to my jumpers when I'm putting them on and off. And so I'm going to make myself a coat, haven't quite decided which coat yet. But I'm definitely going to make her the so over it 1960s coat. And I also actually sent the pattern of the Thrifty Stitcher Dawson coat again off to be printed because I pulled my pattern out a few days ago and it's it's stuck together as last year's PDF, but it's it's fallen apart. So the Dawson coat again um, pattern comes on just one A4, no, one A0 sheet. So I popped it in with printing and I thought I'm going to make another one of those because I find it just so comfy to wear and it's just so handy to pop on. So that'll be another one to make. So the only other thing that I made last week as well, and I know I'm repeating myself if you saw me in the live, is I made Keris the So House 7 toaster sweater. And she loved it and I've heard so much about this pattern and I don't know why I put off buying it for so long because it is amazing. It's got a raglan sleeve version and it's got a set in sleeve version so you get a lot of bang for your buck with this pattern. It's got a funnel neck and it's got a polo neck and I made it for her out of the scribbles fabric and I actually made her two because I kept this lovely pink colour for her because she just loved this when it came in and I made her one out of the grey and then one out of the pink and the grey one is in the wash that's why I'm showing you the pink one she had the grey one on at last week's live and she loves it it's it came together really really lovely I love the long cuff on the end of it and the band is slightly oversized on the bottom of it. I did put the polo neck on it but she just didn't like it and I think the fabric was actually slightly too stiff for it because it just sat up and she just didn't like it so I took it off, I cut it down, I put it back on but it was still like a high funnel neck so I took it off for the second time and I measured it up against basically the neck hole and I used the four-fifths rule that I usually use for a neckband. So I measured the neck and then I cut the neckband to four-fifths that size and it fit in nicely. Now she still thinks that it kind of sticks up ever so slightly like a polo neck but it's on now so I think I'll be making her more of more of them they're really really nice and they actually suit her little frame so nicely with the the raglan sleeve and I do love the funnel neck for myself so I love the patty do Stella top and I've made loads of them and I've adjusted the pattern to fit but I would love to try this one as well because that funnel neck just looks really nice and I have the pattern now so I think yeah, why not? Actually, that would be really nice from the grey as well, wouldn't it? That'd be really nice. So it's definitely, I'm definitely of the feeling that I want to be nice and warm and snuggly because the days are getting colder and darker. And I'm still just either my jeans or my Camden skirts 
a top, generally my summer sets and a cardigan. But I've all these lovely, snuggly, jumpery fabrics coming in and I want to try a few of these as well. So that's all my waffling for this week and thanks so much if you stay to the end and I will see you in the next live or if I don't catch up with you then I will see you in my next video next week. Bye for now.